on Antigua, but this was definitely a better play. We'll find out what exactly life has in mind on the next map. We I actually didn't read what... Uh, it didn't come up on screen, I don't Oh, think. it didn't? I don't think they put Oh, well, we'll find out for soon. So that's okay. That's the first best of three of the day, guys. And here we go. Ohana! Yep, Ohana. Do you know this banana song? Like this really, this, this children's song? Oh, uh, maybe. Banana, 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 one banana, two banana, three yeah, banana, yeah, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. two. Ohana, Ohana, Ohana. <laughs> it's actually exactly the same thing. You, ju you can't just sing it the entire time. <laughs> I had a solo cast like three days ago, and I was the loading screen was going on, and I was looking, and I was like, Ohana, Ohana, and I'm like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny, actually. <laughs> well, we have our players' names announced. You guys already knew who they were. Exactly. Uh, we have live up against C once again. Kespa against GSM players. Yes, and so far 1-1. One, one. Uh, a weak hold on the third base from C, having to, to delay it quite a bit because of those mutas. But in the end, he got so many Thor shots off, and the defense that was set up for drop play was just too much. With all the turrets he had, as well as the center tower letting him know it was coming so he could prepare accordingly, it, the damage was, was okay. But he, since the preparation was good and the Hellions were ready, it was just too much for life. Could not transition, could not uh, keep himself in it. So we'll see if life goes for fast later, get on this third game. If he does, what time will he get it and what will be his tech of choice? Will he go Mutas again, a third game in a row? That's actually a really good question. Will we see the same strategy? Thanks, guys, by the way, for helping with the Reddit thread. So it's already on the first page, I think, on rank two. So people will definitely be aware that there's someone. I love the one comment, by the way. It looks like the Caldor Hit Squad has arrived. <laughs> I don't even have to go hit my install anymore. I don't have to kill anyone. I can send out my hit squad. I didn't even know you had one. I didn't know either. But now that I do, I will use it. <laughs> <laughs> That's dangerous, man. Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Villains out there, be afraid. Calder hit squad is gonna get you. I thought the Calder hit squad was full of villains, man. That's actually a good point. Well, we keep an open mind. Okay. I like that. It's not about... It. You guys are more like mercenaries, really. Not about right or wrong, just about the money. Yeah, we are all about the money, <laughs> all about those two Ferraris and the helicopter. Well, I, uh, I'm actually, I'm, I don't know if I, how would feel being in a helicopter. Have you ever flown in a helicopter before? Um, not in a helicopter, but one of those small planes for. Yeah, I've I did a skydive. That was actually pretty cool. Oh, really? I, I have never done this. I bungee jumped in New Zealand two times, 134 meters, my friend. How was it? Awesome. Skydiving is cool, but in skydiving you have this guy on your back who basically does everything. He jumps you out of the of the plane. But if you do the bungee jump and it's really like a high bungee jump, you stand there and you have to jump. And you stand there and you look down and you're like, what the hell am I doing here? Why am I doing this? Am I really going to jump? And then you're like, ah! There's actually, I have two videos of, uh, well, a video of each jump, and oh my god, it was Do you have amazing. these on YouTube? Can I watch them? Yeah, I put them on YouTube. Okay, I will watch this, because I'm kind of curious. I, the, just the thought, I mean, we're talking about this right now, it gets me stressed out, man. I, I don't like the idea of jumping out of a plane or jumping off a bridge. I'm like, did you really do it? I'm like, I'm like thinking, I'm like, I wonder if he was okay if you're like sitting next to me and you're telling me about it, so it's fine, <laughs> man, but I'm like, I'm was, stressed out for you. It was so funny. I was, I, I mean, we were on a tour. And guys, of course, we will tell you uh, exactly when something uh, important is happening here, but right now everything is just normal. I was on a tour and everyone else was doing the small jump from the bridge that was 43 meters. And I told uh, a friend of mine, we were about to meet up in Queenstown, so I told him, okay, let's do the big bungee jump in Queenstown, we'll do it together. And I had no idea how high it was, I had no clue. So I just had, I was talking to the other, as they, they came back from the bunch and we're like, oh my god, this is so exciting. Like, Guys, what the hell are you talking about? This was child's play. And I was just completely trying to show off the entire time. And so they're like, yeah, yeah, you wait. When you are up there, you will be so scared. I'm like, nah, I'm going to stand there. And I will just look in the camera, I will smile, and will jump immediately. I was bragging the entire time. So I was basically forced when I was actually jumping. I was looking at things. So I was like, okay, if I back down, if I move back only for one second, everyone will be making fun of me the entire time. And yeah, so I was kind of forced to, to act tough, but I was so scared the first time. It was like, oh my god. I don't blame you. I want to note something really interesting about what C is doing here. He has taken his third base at the third base. 
That is something that you never see people do in this yeah. matchup, ever. Yeah, usually you just build it in at your natural, yeah. and uh, then you fly it over as soon as it's done. Yeah, at your natural or uh, you know in your main base with next to your banshees. But in this case, he's doing the same build, just uh, with the third base at the third base. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, that's quite literally what's happening here. It's Two pretty risky. get by, and this is going to be a little bit risky for our Zerg. Life taking up one drone, loss, maybe two, get, loses two. Third one goes down, and that's going to be the end of the Hellions. Four workers killed, not really a trade that's worth it. Yeah, plus, I mean, uh, one of those workers was a scouting worker, I think, so yeah. he's... I mean, three workers for two Hellions is not even enough in minerals there. Plus, he loses the Hellions, so he doesn't have quite that firm grasp of control in the middle of the map that he would have had. The risk that you always run when you take this third base at the third is that one or two links might just run over and take down your SCV and then everything is so much delayed, so definitely a little bit of a risk that he is uh, taking here. Life on the other hand now with his lair tech a little bit slower than we are used to by him, so he's mixing things up, going for the baneling nest and double evo chamber. I might just try to hit a timing here with the uh, banelings and upgrades. Uh, this mid gate timing that we see quite often. But the Banshees, this is exactly what he was relying on in the last two games, and he does it again. The Spore Collar is soon to be done, but the Queen is already dangerously low. It might actually die here. I think it will. Yep, yes. well, one will die, and the second one a little bit vulnerable right now. And once again, Mech for C. Yeah, Mech coming out here. No Overseer, there it is. Okay, Overseer almost done. Uh, he's just going to take out some drones rather than trying to kill that queen. Attacking gas drones never the, the quickest way to get drone kills. Does get out with about five there though. I'm a little bit disappointed in how C, uh, sorry, how life approaches this. Because C has been using uh, those Banshees in every single game thus far. So you have to be aware that it might happen again. And that he was not prepared in time and lost not only the Queen, but already a fair amount of Jones too. This is just something that I would not have expected. I thought he would be set up a bit faster for this. So this four-color in his main is not ready either, and this Queen looking a little bit vulnerable right now. Going to go for drones again instead. A little bit of hesitation from C. I'm, I've, you know, you're a little bit disappointed in life's defense uh, of the Banshees, but I'm also disappointed in the execution of the drone targeting. He, he was microing his Banshee, but not really committing to anything, so he damaged a queen, killed a drone, then hit another drone, then ran away. Could have been a lot better. Um, but he's doing a lot of infrastructure back at home. Blue Flame, plus 1-1 one, one upgrades for his mech army. He's got 10 Hellions out right now. And the third base is up. He put some turrets up there as well for potential Meatless play. And we'll see what he's got in mind of when he's going to start Thor production. Can't see the production tab right now, so I can't even tell you. I, I would assume he's probably starting with tanks since he hasn't seen Mutas with his Banshees yet. He knows the timing for the Spire, and I, you know what that noise is, I hear that. <laughs> yeah, that's Mutalist coming, and they are needed, because here we have the Hellions, and needs to shut them down fast. If those Hellions get into the mineral line, then it's lights out for life's economy. Yeah, he's got a ton of them, but Blue Flame is not done. Looks like he may and want to wait for that, but the Mutas will be out in time. He's a little bit scared here. He's a little bit scared. He was like, oh, well, there's a spine crawler. Let's not commit to this. Yeah, he's a little bit nervous. Uh, about it, and as he should be. Spinecrawler with the Mountain Zergings out there with no blue flame, really gonna do some extra damage, make things a little bit nasty for him. See the barracks is continuing to make add-ons and the mutas are out, like I mentioned, the turrets are up, and here are the Thors, the first Thor shot's a little bit useless. And actually, he only put one turret here, I thought he made a second one, maybe he decided not to make it. I saw the silhouette behind the mineral line, but... If he actually catches the Thor, he could magic box it. If C does not react immediately and starts repairing it with his SEVs, he would have lost it. But he does not want to take the risk, and I don't blame him. But it's definitely something that a few Terran Azur players would have tried to do. Yeah. You gotta be careful about that, though. Uh, well, the Hellions do spot the fourth as well. This is actually really important. The amount of scouting and aggression that we're seeing from C this time seems so much better than any of the games we've seen from thus far, especially not the Antigua game. Uh, this time he is not waiting, he is being aggressive in ways that he can with his Hellions. While building up that mech army, he wants to get as close to max as possible. And this time, he held the third base early. We talked about how important those gases are, he got them really fast, did not hesitate with that. 
making two more tech labs on these factories. His production of mech units is about to be insane. And with those three bases, you can hit max pretty quick. And once you do, that's when you start attacking the Zerg. That's when you start that slow push. This is going to be tough for, for an attack for life. I'm not sure about this. Two Cloak Vanish is adding the DPS here. Life is moving in right now with all these doges that he has. There are a lot of force. And just look how fast those Mutalisks die. Even with the Magic Fog, it's just not enough. But they are baiting the shots out of the tanks. And therefore, the Roaches have free reign now. Taking down Thor after Thor. And immediately, the Terran player is dropping in supply. This is just too much. The SCVs are trying to help out. But it's already too late. Even with the Banshees, he's losing way too many army units. Way too many Thors. And now the economy is going to die as well. Yeah, you know, I, I thought he was actually going to, to hold this attack a little bit better, but it turns out that even with the Banshees there, the Roaches, especially that second wave of them, just did so much, and he's not done. He's rallying more and more Roaches across, and C, forced to lift his command center, canceled double command centers. Now he's in a lot of trouble because his siege tanks were not ready yet. They were not in position to defend his Thors, and you can't fight Roach with pure Thor. I thought he had more tanks nearby, and even even that, I, I really thought the Banshees would help turn the tide a lot better. The Thors also did not attack. They attacked the Mutalists, and the Mutalists died, but the Roaches were still able to do the damage. These tanks are dangerous, but there are way too many Roaches for them to deal with. Yeah, no Thor support for these tanks. You kind of need both. You can't just have one or the other. And even though the Banshees are doing some extra damage to these Roaches, he has not done yet. Taking out depots, going up the ramp, taking out more siege tanks. And I think C may be out of luck for this qualifier. He's down to 68 supply now, and there are Roaches everywhere. At his natural in the main base, those Thors are of course strong, but they are not strong enough. GG, life advances in the tournament, and C is out of luck. Out of luck indeed. And our first Casper player broadcasted does lose. But he looked pretty decent. And I have to say that these guys are really getting uh, better than than I expected. Quicker than I expected. You know, uh, I didn't expect them to to be able to even take games off of these players this soon. Yeah, they did really well here. So we are going to find out who the next, or what next game is going to be that we are going to cast. Uh, by the way, one of the guys who are currently listening to the stream, I think it was Bossy, actually tweeted about the... Uh, yeah, I saw that. Tweeted about the, um, the bungee jump. I retweeted it if you guys haven't seen the bungee jump video and want to see it while we have a break here because we are heading into a five minute break now and then we are going to figure out what exactly we are going to cast Next is probably going to be another Casper player against a GSL player. So stay tuned, and we'll be back in uh, about 5 to 10 minutes.